Hey there guys. Today I'm going to talk to you about what to look for in a kokanee rod. I constantly get asked about other brands of kokanee fishing rods and there are many companies producing kokanee fishing rods out there on the market right now and there's just no way that I can fish them all. So today I thought I would just do a general purpose video what to look for in a kokanee fishing rod. This is going to depend a lot on the type of kokanee fisheries that you participate in. Do you spend more time long lining and using planer boards? Do you spend more time using downriggers? Are you looking for a rod that can do sort of all of those things on the surface, on the downrigger, or maybe even using dropper weights? Or are you jigging for kokanee? So today I'm gonna to go over a bunch of different things to look for in a kokanee rod. I'm primarily gonna focus on blank material, handle material, spinning versus casting rods, guide style, and length. That's gonna be sort of the key things we're gonna talk about. So let's talk about material first. Now, I'm gonna use some terms here, so let's make sure that we're all on the same page. I'm gonna talk about slow action rods. That are, those are rods that take a long time to come back to their original shape. You see they have that kind of bouncy, they're very soft. So these are typically made out of materials that are either fiberglass um, or a composite of fiberglass and some other material, often graphite. I'm going to contrast this with fast action rods. These are typically made of graphite. This is my kokanee jigging rod. Very stiff material because it wants to return back to its original shape. That's why we say fast versus slow. Fast wants to go back to a straight rod, slow feels really whippy and soft. So as you might have guessed, I really prefer soft action rods for trolling most of the time. Uh, they bend very far down into the blank. So you can see I got that thing really arched. This is just the Eagle Claw Kokanee trolling rod, the Featherlight Kokanee rod. This is made out of fiberglass, right? So it's very soft, very wiggly. These are best for trolling applications, especially if loading them up on a downrigger or if you're using dropper weights to get down to kokanee at depth. They actually don't excel that well as a flatline rod. And the main reason that this is, is because they are so soft in the tip, they don't really set the hook that well, right? So you kind of have to speed the boat up to really drive that hook home, or even have to kind of do a little bit of a hook set if you have an especially soft rod that you're running on the surface. This is why oftentimes if I'm using a very slow action rod and I'm targeting kokanee near the surface, I will add a little bit of a dropper weight or I'll even clip it into the downrigger and just drop it one or two feet down because that is going to give it a little bit more of hook setting power versus a soft action rod. So there are some companies out there producing um, graphite trolling rods that are great for surface trolling for kokanee, but for me, that season tends to last in such a narrow window in the spring that I don't really feel like I want to spend the extra money and I have limited space on my kayak as well. But if you're somebody who spends a lot of time long lining for kokanee or using planer boards for kokanee, then maybe a graphite trolling rod that um, has light power, that is, is still a little bit more flexible than say a medium power uh, trolling rod might be an option for you. But I think for most people, they're gonna to wanna to go with a glass rod. So contrast this with my graphite kokanee jigging rod. When I'm jigging, I'm oftentimes jigging kokanee at extreme depths of you know 60 to 100 plus feet. I need something that has good hook setting power and that's why I want a fast action graphite rod, right? Graphite is stiffer. It's gonna help me drive that hook home even though that fish is 100 feet below me. And this is the only graphite kokanee rod that I have is my kokanee jigging rod. And honestly, there are some companies out there producing um, specific kokanee jigging rods, but any medium light action power drop shot bass rod is a perfect uh, kokanee jigging rod in my opinion, because they tend to have a very fast action tip. It's very sensitive, you can feel that bite. and they have pretty good power down here in the base for helping to drive that hook home, okay? Now for me, I am on a kayak. I can't carry 10 different rods with me. Well, I guess I could, but I'm choosing not to because I like to keep things simple. And that is why I prefer composite rods. 
So composite rods have a, a blend of fiberglass and graphite. So you get the best of both worlds. You get the slower action of glass, um, but you also get a little bit more of the hook setting power of graphite. And so this is my Paulina Peak uh, trolling rod. This is the eight foot. I also have seven foot six. Um, and it is a composite rod. It does uh, surface trolling fairly well. It's great on a downrigger because it has a lot of flex uh, like you would expect in a rod with glass material. Um, and it also handles droppers really well because it has that little bit additional power of that graphite uh, deeper in the rod and the glass also gives it strength as well. So uh, that's why I really prefer composite rods. Now, realize that not all composite rods are the same, right? There are different blanks that have different properties. So for instance, the Paulina Peak Rod, I feel like has a little bit more power. It doesn't flex quite as much. It doesn't have as soft a tip as this Oregon Kokanee Kings Rod, which I can really bend, right? Um, so this is a softer rod. So I found that I actually prefer a little bit more power. Having used this rod for a few weeks now and caught, you know, 30 or 40 kokanee on it, I actually prefer that little bit more power. It helps me to pop the kokanee off of my release clip a little bit easier and it handles the heavier dropper weights up to five ounces a little bit better than this one. I would say this rod kind of maxes out in the three to four ounce dropper weight. So depends on how much of a dropper weight you're using uh, will depend on how much power you need. And this is why it's really important to have that opportunity to get out there and, and use rods a little bit, or at least go to the store, compare that power. How far do they flex down? How much does that tip bend? If you're looking for something that's gonna be able to handle a five ounce cannonball, you might wanna go with something with a little bit more power and not some super noodly composite rod or glass rod. Which leads us next into length. Now, almost all of my kokanee rods are seven to eight foot in length. And I, have, I think that's probably an ideal length for most people, unless you're running, say, six or more rods and you spend a lot of time running long lines near the surface or using dropper rigs and you're wanting to spread gear out and you're not using planer boards, then you might want to look into some rods that are in that nine to 10 foot range. There are some companies out there producing um, really long kokanee rods that are gonna help you spread your gear out and reduce tangles. But I think, you know, for most people, most of us will probably be running like two droppers off the back at most and a couple off the downrigger. We might stack a little bit. So for the most part, seven to eight foot's probably more than enough. And that's true even for my kokanee jigging rod. I actually prefer right around seven, six, seven, eight. Um, a little bit longer jigging rod helps you give a little bit more hook setting power because the speed at the end of your tip of your rod is a little bit faster with longer length. But I know folks that use jigging rods down to six foot with no issues. Next up we're going to talk about handle material. Now this is a much more personal preference thing to me, but there are a couple things that you want to keep in mind. One is that different materials come in different diameters, so if you have really large hands you might want to look at handles that have larger uh, diameters. Like a lot of the foam handles tend to have larger diameters. I have a little bit smaller hands, so I actually prefer slimmer handles. Another thing is is durability. So if you look at like foam over time, it will as it, you pull these things in and out of rod holders hundreds of times, the foam will start to break away and deteriorate, especially in UV light, which you'll get plenty of when you're out on the water. Um, so for that reason, I actually don't really like foam handles. And uh, for additionally, for me, because I'm not directly right over the rod holder when pulling it out, I'm actually reaching forward and pulling the rod back to me. So the wider foam handles catch a little bit for me in the rod holder and are harder to get out. Which is why you will find that I actually tend to prefer just classic cork. It's a little bit thinner. It's fairly durable going in and out of the rod holder. And it's fairly easy to wrap um, if it starts to deteriorate over time and you can actually conserve your cork handle. Of course, my favorite is rubber handles because they come in and out of the rod holder fairly easy. They sort of are a nice balance between grippy, but not too sticky. And 
Another problem with kokanee fishing is that you're going to have bait oils on your hand and fish slime. So having something that's grippy when wet is pretty key. Now the foam is extremely grippy and cork is somewhere in between the rubber handles and the foam handles. And that's why I prefer the either rubber or cork. Actually my favorite material is this material here which is compressed rubber and cork combined. That is actually my favorite material. There's a few companies, I know like Fenwick makes some rods that have that full rubber grip material. And to me that's the best of both worlds because it's really durable and grippy. Um, even when it's raining and I got uh, fish oils and fish slime on my hands, I can still grip really tightly. I want to talk a little bit about guides. Mora guides tends to be better because you get a better displacement of line across the rod and you tend to get a more natural curve so you don't have the line touching the blank in places. This is a cheap eagle claw. It has very few guides. That's probably not a huge issue but it's better to have more guides because you're going to get a better distribution of pressure on the line across the guides. Right? That makes sense. That allows the rod to do more of the fighting and less of you and the reel doing the fighting. Now 99% of kokanee rods out there, uh, trolling rods, are tied with guides in line. But there are some companies doing spiral guides. So I'm just going to move the blank straight down and as you see the guides are turning in their position. They rotate as you go down till you get to the end and the tip is in the opposite direction of the guide down at the base. This is called spiral wrapping and what it does is when your rod is loaded up on the downrigger it actually makes it so that the line is pulling downward on the guides themselves like they would on a spinning reel so that there's zero chance that the line is going to be making contact with the blank. So you get a nice clean pressure of line on the guides and no line slap on the blank. This is great if you do a lot of downrigger fishing only, but this is the first time I've ever used a spiral wrapped rod. There's a couple things I don't like about it. One is that the directionality of the spiral matters, so if you're going to run it on the right side of the boat, you need to have the right spiral wrap, left, left spiral wrap. So it really makes it that you have to dedicate that rod to one side of the boat. Additionally, I found one flatlining with spiral wrapped rods is that if I get a bite and the rod tip jumps a little bit, I'm getting tip wrap more than I would with a traditional flat uh, guide design. So uh, I really don't like the spiral wrapping, but uh, some people swear by it. It's a personal thing. It looks cool and I understand the concept, but I really feel like it handicaps the rod. It makes it less adaptable to different situations. It really just becomes a downrigger rod dedicated to one side of the boat. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to stick primarily with traditionally wrapped guides. And of course, the last thing we need to talk about is uh, casting versus spinning. Now, if you're doing trolling, I 100% recommend doing a casting style rod where you're going to use a line counter style reel or level one style reel. Uh, it's just so much easier to deploy and be repeatable, especially with the line counter in terms of your success. With the spinning rod, it's much more difficult to deploy. Not impossible, but more of a challenge, more time consuming. Lost time is lost opportunity to catch fish. That being said, spinning reels are still my number one choice for jigging because I can open the bail. There's no resistance of a level wind and I can drop the line down really quickly, the lure down to the kokanee, get to them and get in that strike zone very quickly. And I'm just relying on my fish finder to see my gear as it drops down towards those fish. Or if I'm casting the jumpers or whatnot, I can cast long distances. It's much harder to cast with a bait caster or a level wind reel um, than it is with a spinning reel. So for that reason, for jigging, I do recommend spinning. I know some folks are using bait casters, Another thing I like about spinning reels is they have a very high gear ratio. That is, I can take up a lot of line very quickly. So if I'm below a kokanee, I can bring it up to them. Or if I'm hooked into a kokanee, it's much easier for me to maintain pressure at these higher gear ratios than it is with a baitcaster style reel. 
There are high-speed bait casters out there, but they're very expensive compared to a spinning reel, which are very cost-effective, affordable, and reliable. All right, if you have any more questions about what to look for in a kokanee rod, let me know in the comments section below and I'll get back to you. And I'll see you next time. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys.